Thanks everyone for joining us today. Hope you're having a good platform so far and welcome to our session all about OAuth Made Easy. Uh, super excited to have you here today. Uh, just a few notes before we get started. Um, please use the Q&A function for any questions you have uh, throughout this chat. Uh, we'll get to as many as possible at the end and follow up with you if we can't get to your question. Uh, note that we will try and wrap up at the top of the hour. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll follow up afterwards if we aren't able to get through all of that. To introduce myself, my name is Ryan. I am a product manager here at Plaid on the developer experience team. And I'll let Steven introduce himself as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Steven Sibley. I'm on the customer engineering team here at Plaid. And we're really excited for everyone on this session. Thanks, Stephen. So to kick it off here, uh, you know, three things that I really want all of you to take away from today's session. The first one is that the industry is moving towards bank APIs and OAuth, which comes with a bunch of benefits for both you and your end users. Two, with Plaid, it just takes a few easy steps to get these benefits. And Stephen's going to walk you through this uh, just in a few minutes. And then three, by building with us, you get access to the best data and the smoothest experience possible. Here at Plaid, our mission is to unlock financial freedom for everyone. In order to do this, one of the things we're really focused on is the future of data access. And since we know that the financial ecosystem is moving to API-based access, we want to embrace these APIs in a way that maximizes the benefit to you and your end users. Before I dive in further, I want to talk to you about two terms, bank APIs and OAuth. You may have heard these terms before, but what do they actually mean and what's the difference here? Bank APIs refer to how we retrieve data from the bank, whereas OAuth refers to an authentication standard that consumers can use to permission their data so it can be shared with you. In the simplest terms, this means that a bank API allows us to ask the bank for a piece of information that they return to us, we pass along to you. The OAuth flow is one of the ways for the user to authenticate themselves on the bank website to allow this transfer of information to take place. Now, both of these are increasingly common and come with a bunch of exciting advantages that we're going to dive into here. Let's start by digging into bank APIs and why Plaid has decided to move in this direction. First of all, security is at the heart of everything we do here at Plaid. In API connections, access is tokenized and credentials are never stored. Next, reliability is key for end users to be able to access their account at any time. Since APIs are structured and defined and generally backed by a contract, it means we can provide more reliable data. We always know what data we'll get, the connection to an item won't unexpectedly break, and we know about scheduled bank downtime ahead of time. Along these same lines, data quality is also improved. Because the API is a structured way for us to retrieve that data, we can work with the bank to ensure that we have access to a comprehensive set of accurate data. And finally, we can improve the user experience. Now, this is where OAuth comes in. Uh, the, three, the three previous benefits on the slide, you can get all just by using bank APIs. But OAuth also allows us to give a better login method uh, to the user. Uh, and we'll dive into that a little bit more on the next slide. As mentioned, OAuth is one way that we can allow the end user to access their data. OAuth, or open authentication, is the industry standard for enabling consumer permission data access. At Plaid, we're working with many of the top banks to create OAuth flows like the one shown here. So let me walk you through how this works. First, a user would go to your app, enter the link flow like they would normally. And then if the user chooses a bank that is enabled for OAuth, they would be redirected to the bank property, in this case, Chase. 
Here the user can enter their credentials, knowing their credentials will be secure as it's directly uh, entered on the bank's website or app. This also comes with additional benefits uh, like alternative login methods such as Touch ID or Face ID, which simplify and accelerate the login process. After this step, there may be other screens within the OAuth flow, such as Account Select, shown here as the fourth screen. And once all of this is done, the user will be redirected back to Link and ultimately back to your application. At this point, Plaid now has a token that we can use to access data and pass that along to you, uh, all in a way where we never had to collect credentials from the user. Now that we've covered why bank APIs and OAuth are so important, I'll hand it off to Steven to walk you through the steps to take in order to make sure your integration is taking full advantage of what Plaid has to offer here. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. So now that you have an idea of what the OAuth flow looks like at Plaid, let's go over the steps it takes to implement. There are three steps for getting live, the non-technical pre-work, the technical build, and lastly, testing and launch. Starting with the non-technical pre-work, it is required to complete the application profile and the security questionnaire before being enabled for production. With the technical build, there are a few technical changes required that we'll go over at a high level later on in this presentation. And lastly, testing and launch. You can test in parallel with completing the steps above in Plaid Sandbox environment. Starting with the OAuth institution page, Plaid put this page together to make the OAuth migration as seamless and transparent as possible. This is a one-stop shop for our customers to see where they are in the OAuth migration process. Here you can find your overall registration status, the application profile status, and the security questionnaire. Once all of these are complete and the technical work is implemented slash tested, you're ready to go live in production. So let's move on to the application profile. Be sure to populate your app's information in your Plaid dashboard under team settings in the application tab. This information will be used by Plaid and banks to populate various parts of the user experience, such as the OAuth flow, where a bank may use your app name and logo to help users visualize the connection they are authorizing. The bank's portal for managing third-party access where users may be able to view and manage all the apps they've linked to. And the Plaid portal where users can view and manage all the banks and Plaid powered apps they've linked to. After the profile is complete, we'll automatically send your application to the bank so you can promptly access the latest integrations. Taking some time to look at the example on the right, completing the application profile allows Plaid and the banks to tell the consumer a clear story of where the data is coming from and how it's moving to your application. Let's move on to the final step of the non-technical work, the security questionnaire. So one of Plaid's core tenants is to advocate on behalf of developers and consumers. The security questionnaire is a critical component of our ability to achieve this. We ask all Plaid customers to share their privacy and security practices to ensure we're building a safer ecosystem for you, your customers, and other fintechs. As you can see in this video, once you have all the information required available, there are only three pages of multiple choice questions to fill out and complete the questionnaire. Now that we've gone over all the technical steps, non-technical steps required, let's dive into the technical requirements. So whether you're new to Plaid or working with web views or iframes, this is a great opportunity for your development team to use our mobile SDKs. Here are a few reasons why. The amount of lines of code required are around tenfold less. We provide monthly updates with the latest features. It's a type safe API. We support all link flows, including OAuth, out of the box. Generally, there's wider support from Plaid for our mobile SDKs. Speaking as a, a customer engineer, it's much easier to debug a customer's integration if they're using one of our mobile SDKs. And lastly, we provide regularly updated documentation. If you are an existing customer of Plaid and using public keys, you're required to move over to link tokens to implement OAuth. Let's dive into a few more technical requirements. 
So you'll be required to configure a redirect URI and the landing page. And you'll pass that redirect URI into the link token create call. Depending on your implementation, web or mobile, and the SDK you're using, there may be slight differences in the implementation. One example is passing in the Android package name if you're using the Android SDK instead of the redirect URI. You're also required to register this redirect URI or Android package name in the Plaid dashboard. For web, you're required to persist user state. So that's storing that link token from the link token create call, as well as capturing the received redirect URI, which is just the redirect URI with an OAuth state ID appended to it. You'll then pass in both of those parameters when reinitializing link for that first, the second time. And that lets Plaid know that it's a returning user who just completed the bank sign in in their OAuth flow. Once you start implementing, there may be slight differences in the data return for each institution. You can find out more about these differences in the OAuth guide on the OAuth institution page in the dashboard. And lastly, we've developed additional on-event metadata to get a better understanding of where your users are in the OAuth flow. These are the high-level steps required to implement. Once, we, once completed, we recommend testing in our sandbox environment. And I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm using Plaid's Dockerized Quick Start for ease of testing. We support a few backend languages, but I'm using Node for this demo. Let's move over to the dashboard. So here you can see where I captured my client ID and I got my sandbox secret that I'm passing in. Also where I've registered my redirect URI and where you can register your Android package name as well. Please note you can use HTTP for sandbox, but you'll have to use HTTPS URIs for production. I'm now going to initialize link. Here you can see the launch link button. You can imagine that being the connect a bank account. We'll then launch link, search for a Plaid's OAuth institution. Multiple will pop up. Either will work. You'll then see that we notify the user. They'll be navigated outside of the link experience and then back to the app. Here you can sign in, you can test OTP, and then the user will be able to select one or multiple accounts, as well as the information within those accounts they're willing to permission. This is to mimic the OAuth experience when signing into a live institution. Link will then be reinitialized. The user can select which accounts they're willing to permission, click continue, and then you can use Plaid's APIs as you always have. So now that I've gone over the non-technical and technical steps required to implement OAuth and where to test these implementations, I'll hand it over to Ryan to talk about launching in production. Thanks, Stephen. So after taking these steps, you're ready to launch. And the good news is that the requirements for each of these OAuth integrations is very similar to each other. Um, so once you complete your first integration, you should be ready to go on subsequent integrations. Of course, you may want to do some of your own testing uh, before proceeding. Additionally, you will continue to get benefits of all future OAuth and bank API integrations that we roll out, including Bank of America, which we're excited to share is coming soon. Finally, to recap, Plaid is committed to improving security reliability, data quality, and user experience. And we're leveraging OAuth to do all of this. To give you a couple examples of the impact we've already seen from OAuth, first of all, we launched uh, OAuth in partnership with Capital One earlier this year, and we've already seen over half a million end users be able to leverage transaction data for their use cases. Additionally, we're seeing a 10% improvement on identity field completion rate on OAuth bank API integrations. And this is just the start of this trend, which we believe is a critical step towards our mission of unlocking financial freedom for everyone.
Thank you all so much for joining today. And I hope this session was helpful. Here are a few next steps that you can take depending on where you are in the process. Check out our Plaid docs if you're just getting started. And once you begin, you can see your progress in the Plaid dashboard. All right, and with that, I think we can close it out. Um, I wanna thank everyone so much for joining the session. And again, um, this will be recorded and on YouTube, I believe next week. Um, so if anyone has missed it, feel free to look out for that. Um, thanks again, everyone for joining. Thanks everyone.